Hey guys, so welcome to today's video and before I start I have to say a massive thanks again to the guys at Olight for their continued support of me and the channel so massive thanks to them. So one of the good things about the i5T OD Green is that it's a tail switch everyday carry torch. It's, it's powered by a, a single AA battery and it gives a maximum output of 300 lumens. It also has one of the little um, dual direction clips which as I said before it's a really really handy thing um, if you want to use it as a head torch, you can just flick it onto your cap or hook it onto your camera bag. Now, they are running a little bit of a promotion at the minute. They're having a flash sale on this torch. So I'm going to drop all of the information, all of the links in the description below. And they've also very kindly, as before, they've given me a little discount code for you guys if you want to use it. Um, so again, I'll, I'll flash that up on the screen and everything will be in the links below. So go and check them out. So circular polarizers, where do we start? Um, for me, a polarizer is probably the one filter in the back, your camera bag, that you just cannot recreate in, um, in Photoshop. I'm gonna kind of go through a few of the, the reasons why I use it pretty much all the time. For most of my landscape stuff, I'll have a circular polarizer on the front of the lens, and then we're gonna head down, and um, I'm gonna just show you the effect that it has um, whenever you're shooting water and you're shooting streams or rivers or waterfalls or, or even seascapes. So my polarizer of choice is the Nissi um, landscape polarizer. Now this is part of their V6 holder system and just as full disclosure I am a UK ambassador for Nissi. I'm really excited that I've come on board with them this year and um, fantastic company, amazing filters. I will be doing a bit of um, a more in-depth video in a few weeks time of the filters and kind of all the filters that I use. But today I'm just gonna be focusing on the circular polarizer. So a couple of reasons, well, probably actually more than a couple, but um, one of the big things a, a circular polarizer will do is that it will cut through glare and reflection. So this is so important whenever you're shooting in really high contrast scenes, especially if you're shooting water, which I'll show you later on. Um, if I've ever shooting um, any kind of seascape or river or stream or or waterfalls I will always use a polarizer it just as you rotate it it will cut out all of the glare cut out all the surface reflection and one of the other good things about it is that it also gives a nice boost to the saturation um, so if you've got lovely greens in your scene or maybe a lovely sunset it will add a bit more color to it which is really useful as well so another really good thing about the polarizer is that if you're shooting um, with nice blue skies that as you rotate it, it will give a bit of a boost to the sky. So you've probably seen these shots online where um, people have these really lovely, vibrant blue skies and, and the white clouds almost seem to be 3D. Um, those have been shot using a polarizer. So as you rotate it, um, it, it'll move across the sky and you'll see the blue sky getting darker and then it'll kind of fade out as it unpolarizes again. So um, if you want that kind of look, then definitely look into to having a polarizer. Um, one, of, one of the other things which um, I actually didn't realize it until a few years ago whenever um, I've been using polarizers for years, but if you're shooting a rainbow, um, a polarizer can either completely pretty much remove it from the scene or as you rotate it again, it will really bring it to life. So if there's a rainbow in the sky, get the polarizer on, start rotating it and it'll really make it pop out. Now, when it comes to exposure time with the polarizer, as a landscape photographer, I'm pretty much using a tripod all the time, so it's not really an issue, but it will cut down the amount of light that's hitting your sensor, normally by about a stop and a half, maybe to two stops. So just bear that in mind that whenever you put it on, you will have to adjust your shutter speed to, to compensate for it. So if you're trying to get long exposures um, in the right kind of conditions, just cutting down a couple of stops of light, that'll actually help you get a few um, slightly longer exposure than you would have without the polarizer on. Okay, so I think for the purpose of today's video, that's kind of a very rough and um, very quick run through of some of the benefits of a polarizer. Um, for today's video, I'm going to show you specifically what it does in water. So this is why I always use it for my seascapes, um, always use it for waterfalls. 
I just love the fact that it cuts through the glare of the water so um, whenever you have a lot of light reflecting off and you'll see this later on you kind of get a reflection so you'll get um, a lot of blowing out and the, to me the, the water just looks, looks yucky without it so um, we'll go down to the river here um, I have a few compositions in mind and I'll show you just the effect it has and um, as I say it's probably the one filter that I have on most of the time so um, I think if you're, if you're getting any landscape photography this is one of the filters that you definitely need to consider getting. So I have found my, my first composition and I've moved upstream from where I normally shoot at here. This is the location I normally visit in the autumn time. The colours here are absolutely insane but there's just so many people about today so they've kind of all flocked to the, the hot spot. So it has forced me up river and I found this really nice composition. And um, I'm gonna show you the effect of, um, of what basically what a polarizer does. So if I unpolarize the scene, um, what I'm getting in the black of the water is just all of this horrible glare coming down from, from the light, coming down through the trees. I'm going to take a shot just to let you see um, what I'm talking about. So my exposure time is 1.3 seconds shooting at f11. And all I have on the front is the, the circular polarizer. Now, I'm going to just turn this and actually polarize the scene. And as you can see, this is making an absolute huge difference. Not only is it cutting out the glare and the reflections in the water, so it's really darkening down the water, but it's also making all of the greens really come alive. It's really, really, the colours are popping in them. There's a, a lovely um, green rock down in my, in my bottom right foreground, and as I polarise the scene, it's just becoming so much more vibrant. So any time that I'm shooting any kind of water, whether it be seascapes, whether it be scenes like this where it's a river or a stream or a waterfall I'll always use a polarizer and this is why because it just makes the scene become much more vibrant makes the colors pop and completely cuts out the glare from the water Now I've decided to come over to the other side of the river. I, I was over here at the start and decided I would head over to the other side where I was a moment ago. Uh, so I'm not actually sure why all the really good compositions are in really precarious positions in the river. The composition over here works so much better for a couple of reasons. One, I've, I'm pretty much eliminating most of the sky now. Um, on the other side, I was shooting back up and there was a bit of a clearing between the trees and what I was finding was that the scene was quite bright, so um, my eye was always being drawn to that white patch of the scene. This way here, I'm eliminating most of it, but what we also have are these, I guess one, two, three, three or four really amazing tree trunks that are sweeping up through, and I'm trying to put them on the thirds um, just to, to add a little bit more interest. And we've got some lovely white water down here on the right-hand third, and then a lovely, almost like a perfect circular boulder on the left. And this is working really well. At the minute, exposure time is um, an eighth of a second, F11. And if I show you again the benefits of using a polarizer here, I'm gonna take a shot. And to be honest, the unpolarized version looks absolutely, uh, looks absolutely horrific. Now, where do you see this? The difference that the polarizer makes here is incredible. The water goes lovely and dark. The greens are all so, so vibrant now. And it's just completely cut out so much glare and it's added a little bit more contrast and saturation. And I'm finding that that eighth of a second is just a nice exposure just to get enough trailing and movement in the water but still keeping some of the detail in it. 
But yeah, polarizer is so essential for a shot like this. Okay, and one of the, the really good things is, the polarizer I'm using is the Nissi, and it's part of the, the V6 landscape holder, and it's a, it's basically a 100 mil system, and the polarizer, instead of screwing directly onto your lens, it goes onto an adapter ring. So with the, the holder and the, and the polarizer, you'll get a few different sized um, adapter rings. So it means you don't have to buy a separate polarizer for every filter. All you have to do is screw in the adapter ring and the polarizer will fit that. And the idea is that the, the holder then goes onto the front of the polarizer. But the really clever thing with this is that you don't actually have to rotate the front of the polarizer with your fingers, which could lead to kind of getting grubby marks and fingerprints on it. All you have to do is rotate this ring. Um, they've got a little ring on the side of it here, and as I rotate it, it actually spins the polarizer around, which is really, really, it's a really cool feature, really easy to use. And it's just, it's, it's nowhere near as fiddly as other systems that I've used in the past, so this is fantastic. And it just makes fine tuning the amount of polari polarization that you want to use, it makes fine tuning that so, so simple. Just gonna take one last shot here, and then I think I'll move on to another composition. So I've come down to probably one of the most photographed bridges in Northern Ireland, which is Foley's Bridge. And normally I'm here in the autumn time. Uh, colours are insanely good. But um, I've come down in the, and obviously I'm in the summer now, and I don't actually think I've photographed it in these kind of conditions before. But, but the composition for this one's actually pretty simple. Um, using the rule of thirds, where we've got the, uh, the white water down in this third, and uh, Foley's bridge itself is up in the top left third. And again, I'm gonna just increase the exposure a little bit just to let you see the back of the camera a little bit better, but kind of feels like I'm, I'm reiterating a point here, but the difference that the polarizer makes is huge. So if I just adjust that slightly so you can see it, and that is it unpolarized. So you can see all of this here, especially down in the, the bottom left here massive big blob of I guess white water, it's the reflection of the sky. But as I start to polarise, look how much of that it takes it away. Almost makes it vanish. So again, unpolarised and then this is it polarised. So yeah, I know I keep repeating the point but if there is one filter that you need to add to your, your camera bag as a landscape photographer, it definitely has to be a circular polarizer. Mm -hmm. 